G'day guys and gal. One of the best yet most intimidating aspects of Warhammer 40k is not only how many characters there are, but also how deep and interesting each character is. Nobody embodies this more than Hyperion, a legendary Grey Knight Astartes whose record and power is second only to Kaldor Drago. Considering Kaldor Drago was more or less a wet dream created by a Grey Knight simp rider, that's a massive compliment to Hyperion. But beyond his standard badassery, this guy's lore is extremely rich and detailed. We literally meet him as a child and spend entire books with him before he ascended to become an Astartes. In terms of backstory, there really is no other space marine that is as interesting is Hyperion, and that is worth talking about today. Before we get started, this will be my last lore video until Christmas, so Merry Christmas guys and gal. I have one last little gift for you. Remember this little magical plushie I launched a few months ago? Well, with how positive the feedback and response was, I decided to get another maid. Introducing the newest Magical plushie. Whilst my old one was modeled off my original avatar as well as a bit of fantasy, this one is based off my current avatar and sci-fi. Get him to keep your only last company as a toy for your kid, or you know, just cut a hole in him and shove you. I got demonetized last time I said that last bit, so we'll stop it there. Same as last time, this plushie is limited and will only be on sale for the next month or so. After that, gone forever. You literally cannot and will not ever be able to get this older one, so you don't want to miss out on the new one. Last time we sold around like 900, so let's beat it. Let's get to a thousand. Link in description below. Today we'll go over the incredibly interesting life of the legendary Grey Knight hero Hyperion. Yep, that's the video. Uh, let's get into it. For most Space Marine character videos I make, their genuine story begins sometime after they ascend to become an Astartes, with only some minimal backstory during their early years. But with Hyperion, real name Zale, if that name rings a bell then well, you're in for a treat, his story begins much earlier. Zale was born in the slums of an insignificant hive city on a world no one really gives a shit about. During an outbreak of hive pox, which I assume is like a fatal version of herpes, because I'm immature, both his parents died. His grandma took him in, however she too died because you know old people be dropping like flies. Hence only Zale's sister remained to look after him. Kid was only 11 years old. Well, as any good sister does, she got addicted to drugs. More specifically, something called a flect, which was, you know, low-key a warp tainted drug that had like a one in a million chance of letting a demon possess you upon usage. Zale also got addicted to this drug because life isn't fair. He was a runt, malnourished, and forced to live on the street and work with gangs in order to secure his next flect hit. It was during this time that Inquisitor Ravenor, the pupil of the legendary Inquisitor Eisenhorn encountered Zale and saw that he possessed an extremely unique psychic power. Basically, he was a psychic mirror, able to intercept psychic communication and project it elsewhere. Now, this does sound pretty shit when compared to stuff like shooting lightning out of your dick hole. However, psychic mirrors are known to have extremely powerful hidden abilities that manifest as they get older, with the mirror aspect just being the tip of the iceberg. As such, Ravenor took Zale under his wing in the hopes that he could raise the boy to be a force for good within the Imperium. During the horrific adventures with Ravenor, Zale realized during an intense battle against the bad guys that one of Ravenor's own acolytes was host to one of the most powerful demons in existence. However, since Zale didn't have hard proof and would get murdered by the acolyte if he tried to tell on him, he put himself into a coma for self-protection. The idea was that by biding his time and gathering evidence while comatose, he could eventually tell Ravenor the truth. How does one gather evidence and communicate when comatose, I hear you ask? Well, well, here is where Zale goes insano style. While in a coma, he was taken care of by the group's Blank, an anti psycho man who loved porn called Winston. Zale was able to break through Winston's blankness, something even the Emperor struggled to do, and psychically communicate with Winston, eventually being able to possess his body. A psycho possessing a Blank is something I've never seen done before in the entire lore of 40k. Using Winston, Zale was able to warn Ravenor about the Mega Demon, which directly led to the saving of countless quadrillions of lives. After this, Winston and Zale went off on their own. However, since Zale was a potent psyker, it didn't take long for Inquisitor Lilith Abif Quan, Jesus, what the fuck is that name, to catch up with him and take him into custody. She quickly realized the boy was special though, and after some probing, saw that he had the potential to become a Grey Knight, the legendary demon slayers of humanity. If you're wondering how Chaos hasn't won the entire setting yet, despite the fact they have multiple demon primarchs, the answer is Grey Knights, psychic warriors embedded with the gene seed that comes from the 
Emperor himself. Sadly, as a part of the Grey Knight induction, Zael had his memories wiped, his adventures with Ravenor seemingly deleted, and he was given a new name, Hyperion. He would go on to complete the trials and become a fully fledged Grey Knight, seen as a talented warrior but lacking discipline. Since Grey Knights are exposed to the warp and demons on the daily, discipline is pretty important. However, this lack of conventional discipline might have also been what made him so powerful. During the First War of Armageddon, when Angron popped in and ruined everyone's shit, Hyperion was one of the Grey Knights sent to stop him. Well, as you can imagine, this didn't go so well. The Grey Knights were mangled and massacred. Only Hyperion remained, too loyal to leave an injured squadmate behind. As Angron prepared to strike Hyperion down, the Mad Lad was like, no you, and he cum blasted Angron so hard that his Core Knight Demon Blade shattered. Angron was stunned, and that momentary weakness allowed the Grey Knights to banish him back to hell. Hyperion didn't just walk this off though. He had to replace half his head with Augmetics and be put into stasis to prevent him from dying. Dude literally blew his own skull out with the effort of breaking Angron's sword. However, despite this, he would return to active duty within four months. Now, shattering a demon Primarch's weapon is a bit of a vibe. Hence, Hyperion became the Blade Breaker, universally admired within the Grey Knight Order, as well as by the Space Wolves he had fought alongside. However, his admiration wouldn't last long, as the Space Wolves and Inquisition entered into a violent conflict. So the Inquisition wasn't a fan of the fact that a bunch of people saw Angron, one of the sons of the Emperor, as a raging demon lord. Hence, they wanted to genocide the planet's population. The Space Wolves, who were just bled to protect these people, were like, bruh, no. Now, both sides did have a point. The Space Wolves wanted to protect innocent Imperial citizens. The Inquisition wanted to prevent the spread of potential taint and heresy. Neither side would back down, hence they fought. The fighting was mostly the Inquisition's fault, who employed dodgy cheap tactics, like using a parlay to ambush the wolves and bombing the wolves' home planet. So they did kind of become the bad guys. Hyperion decided enough was enough, so he confronted his Lord Inquisitor, the guy who had been pushing for the genocide of Armageddon's people with the intent of killing him. However, Hyperion is a loyal and noble man. After reading the Inquisitor's deepest thoughts, he saw that the man was genuinely following what he thought the Emperor's will was, and what he thought was the right thing. While he was still conflicted, Hyperion sided with the Inquisition against the Wolves. During the bombardment of Fenris by the Inquisition, Logan Grimner arrived back in his home system, and boy oh boy was he not in a good mood. For context, Logan is never in a good mood, and he literally wields a Cornite Demon Axe. But seeing his homeworld bombed, Holy shit, he was so angry he did something that is considered to be impossible, sprinted in Terminator armor. He cut through the Grey Knights like sashimi, slaughtering them. It was only when he was face to face with Hyperion did he meet his match. The two legends fought to a standstill, with Hyperion even managing to crack Logan's axe. But before a winner could be decided, Bjorn the Fell Handed interjected and called for a ceasefire. This time it worked because Logan had just decapitated the Lord Inquisitor who was responsible for the conflict. The two factions came to an agreement and the Grey Knights departed, a shame that they had just fought a bloody conflict with one of the most loyal Astartes chapters to ever exist. They were demon hunters, yet they had just bled for a political dick measuring contest. The experience matured Hyperion, finally giving him the discipline to climb the ranks of the Grey Knights chapter. This newfound discipline allowed him to hone his psycho powers further, eventually pushing him into the role of the very respected Prognostica, Grey Knights who were able to read the currents of the warp and predict where demon incursions will attack from. It's the Prognosticas that allow the Grey Knights to be in the right place at the right time. Without them, they would be nearly useless, as it only takes a demon incursion like a few days to take over a world. If the Grey Knights couldn't predict where they would appear, then they would never be able to intercept them in time. At the moment, Hyperion is in semi-retirement, acting as a teacher and instructor for the next generation of Grey Knight Prognosticas. This sounds like a lame fate, but it's important. The Prognosticas nearly died out due to how rare they are, and without them, the Grey Knights are fucked. I also doubt that this is Hyperion's last appearance in the setting. Dude is gonna go out in flames. About that, I have zero doubt. So that's the life of Hyperion, but what was he capable of? What was he like? Well, Hyperion wasn't like conventional Grey Knights. He had obscenely potent survival skills since he didn't grow up in a good environment. He also learned not to rely on others, thus making him a pretty shitty squad mate who would often go off lone wolf during missions. However, despite not being a good teammate, he was extremely loyal to his friends and he formed deep personal bonds. He's his mind was so strong that despite the memory wipe, he actually maintained some fragments of his previous life, something that rarely happens. As he came from nothing, his ascension to a Grey Knight didn't turn him into this arrogant prick like is so common with other Astartes. 
He would always make time for mortals and was never annoyed by the attention or conversation they made with him. Overall, just a top bloke. For his abilities, he was the jack of all trades. His psychic mirror power allowed him to act as a literal radio on the battlefield. He could send and receive psychic communication on the fly. On top of that, he was a very potent pyrokine, able to burn his enemies with warp fire. Going further, he was also a very solid telekine, able to move things with his mind. But wait, there's more. He also mastered the ability of warp jumping, letting him quickly teleport into the warp and out at a different location nearby, a lot like what the elder warp spiders do. He had other abilities as well, like mind reading, warp traveling, and reading the warp currents. It's very unusual for a psyker to have so many abilities. Usually, a psyker is just a pyrokine, or a telekine, or a telepath. Just one, not all of them at the same time. Now, some people could argue that he is a Mary Sue, but some people could also argue that eating dog shit is a good idea. A Mary Sue is when someone is randomly given obscene powers just cause. Hyperion had a hell of a life, training for centuries, facing pain, death, and destruction, going through agonizingly conflicting events that shaped him as a character. The dude blew out his own fucking skull from the effort of merely breaking a sword. Compare that to the actual Mary Sue, like Keldor Drago, who cut up Mortarion's heart and teabag it, then you'll see that Hyperion is an interesting, fleshed out and compelling character, who I for one hope we see more of. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up the Major Guild plushie. At this rate, it's becoming a collectible, as after those 21 days of orders, you will never be able to get this again. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more hyper content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.